Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are supernatural, fantasy, and or science fiction or genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Debris. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, you have that opening, which is actually kind of super sad, because you have that moment between those two being like, hey, you dropped your glove, and it's like they have this conversation, and then things get quiet, and you're like... Okay, what's going on? And they end up going through what they later on describe as a wormhole. And it's kind of sad. Like, literally everyone but that one dude ended up dying, which is like, that's so heartbreaking. Because, I mean, that, I mean, I guess that's the whole situation that's kind of give you, like, this human moment and stuff like that. It's just like, oh, everything, you know, it, there always has to be that jump off point of, like, everything being normal. But it's just, it's actually so soul crushing because you're like, oh, like, just in this instant, everyone on that bus except for that dude ended up dying. But then later on, they end up finding him. He ended up, like, being shot in the head. It's like, well, they didn't want any witnesses left around because obviously home dude's face was shown and everything. So they didn't want to have any quick, they didn't want to give Orbital a chance to catch up to him. So they ended up killing the dude after they got what they needed from him. But at the same time, we're still dealing with like the ramifications of Vanola knowing her dad's alive. Knowing not only that the CIA knew about it with well, Americans in general, but in particular Brian knew about it and he kept it from her. So she's obviously pissed with him, which he recognizes that, but she's made sure not to let him know that she knows. So she's just kind of being a little once again it's a whole thing of like, yeah, we just we just won't understand you know how each other operates. Like the fact is that he's like, I'm sorry I know that we like disagreed on how uh, that, that last operation was going to go and it's like it, it's fine that we're just going to have different points and she's like yeah we just see the world differently and that's fine and it's like we're good I promise you we're good everything's fine but obviously she's just a little pissed at him I think there is a part of her that still wants to forgive him because I guess I think on some level there is a part of her that recognizes like he's just built differently than me like he's just used to following orders there is a line later on when it comes from like, obviously, she finds out, like, you know, because obviously they're looking for that footage. And Maddox is saying it's that basically the Chinese took it down. Whereas Fanola's like, are you sure? Like, you know, how do you know Maddox is telling you? know, How do you know? Like, does he tell you everything? He's like, no. Brian's like, I know Maddox tells me everything. Which maybe on some level she was kind of hoping that maybe things were a little wrong. That maybe Brian didn't know that Maddox keeps things from. But I guess it's a situation of her trying to really gauge whether or not she can really trust Brian. Because it's like... If you're that closely tied with Maddox that you would believe, like, either either she feels like he's willfully ignorant or at the very least, you know, as unaware that he's ignorant about a lot of stuff. Because we as the audience know Maddox is keeping a lot from Brian as well. But we don't know if it has to deal with their history, the reason why Brian trusts him unconditionally. But I think Fanola's in that spot. I mean, that's a big part of this episode, learning, like, who she can trust. Because... Obviously, she feels like the only person she can trust is Ferris, because Ferris is the only one that's going to tell her the truth about her dad and trying to get answers about all of this, especially this episode when they end up crossing paths. At first, they follow the guy that was there at the moment of the bus incident. Then they end up tracking him. They ended up finding his fingerprints and identity, and they ended up tracking him to a hotel, and he ended up meeting with, up with the other members of Influx, which obviously Fanola knows that they're responsible for her dad's disappearance. So it's like, all right, I got to jump on top of this. Really quickly, because she wants information, because she wants to talk to one of them, because that's the fastest way to find out anything about her dad. But the dude that was captured, he was like, you can try and stop it, but no matter what you do, even if you do stop it, you can't stop what's coming. The fact of the matter, um, even if I fall, another will rise and saying that this technology kind of essentially sounding like he's saying this technology is for everyone so i guess whatever they're doing influx is trying to bring this technology to the world because they're trying to gather up the pieces because they know that if the government any government gets their hands on it this is going to be used to be weaponized so it might be a situation of we're trying to wake the world up because obviously the debris is like a government secret so i think they're trying to let the world know and try to get the world access to it because i think it's kind of a thing of where uh, we're fighting, we're of the people fighting for the people type of thing and I think it's like the government's not going to want these, they're going to try to weaponize these and keep them to themselves and no one person just have access to all this power so it's kind of a thing of we're trying to I guess test these out you know, and then like dish them out to the rest of the world I'm assuming um, put the power back in the people type of thing, I don't know because obviously, once again, we like I said, this is like a government secret that like obviously some people have gotten peeks into 
over the course of the season so far, but that's, you know, not on a widespread level. So that's one I'm what I'm wondering. Is that what Influx is doing? Is that what they're all about? We'll ultimately have to wait and see on that front. But when that guy, Dolly Fanola, felt like that was one less clue to finding out a way to get to her dad, especially because she has her sister calling her up, because it's like, you've got this secret of knowing. She doesn't quite know what to believe. Like, that's the thing, too. So there is this thing of, I know dad might be alive. Do I tell my sister, obviously, the impact? Because her sister already knew there was something more to their dad's death. But, you know, Fanola didn't really think too much of it. And now it's like, oh, your sister was technically right. But she doesn't want to give her sister false hope because it's like she doesn't have answers. So, like, any questions that Didi might have, she won't be able to respond to it. So it's like her sister's in this particularly very delicate place that I think she's trying not to um, ruin that because she's scared of what it might do to her sister at the end, kind of send her off the deeper deep end. So she's trying to figure things out, you know. And so she has to keep this secret. So it's interesting because there's a whole conversation last episode about needing to know the truth. It's like you're holding the truth back from your sister, but you're probably only going to hold it back. But, you know, that's going to be a thing, too, of like, you know, it's going to be a thing of how long did you know dad was still alive? Why didn't you tell me sooner? I was trying to get answers. It's like, no, you know, once again. And I think that's what leads her a little conflicted, too, because she made such a point last episode of like, you have the right to know to, you know, to take the truth and do what you will with it. You know, it's yours. So it's not just as much for it's just as much Dee Dee's truth as it is Finola's truth about learning, you know, well, you know what happened to her dad. So it puts Finola in this very compromising position because, once again, she doesn't know who to trust. Even that dude later on that gives her the video from uh, from China that. Was kind of because it has something to do with like this debris piece because they they end up learning that this debris piece that can open up uh, uh, wormholes was actually in uh, Germany, but it was stolen like a couple months back. And obviously, Brian talked about the people that came out of that were like basically spaghetti strings, uh, or at the very least, it was kind of like a mass of like spaghetti, like. Well, I don't know whether he was necessarily referencing, like, the noodles or specifically, like, the meat sauce with all the guts and stuff like that. But uh, it was kind of a horrible situation, yet everyone in this particular incident came together intact through the bus. So, obviously, they're learning how to control this more and more. They're actually testing out the power to debris. And so, they ultimately end up figuring out that, um, basically, you need two, like, uh, metal points to kind of conduct the electricity that's built up from the debris because it takes a lot of electricity and energy that needs to be built up that the uh, the, the high-pitched whining sound that they're hearing is basically the debris charging up. That basically, uh, that's kind of the sign of what's about to come. And basically, last time it was like two hours before it happened with the bus and now it's going to happen again but on a larger scale because before it was like maybe a block this time it's about like several blocks so a good chunk of Manhattan it's going to get sucked up it would have been interesting to see like what that necessarily would have looked like I mean granted last time we saw only one person survived granted that was inside of a bus too so we don't know what this will do to like people just out and about like maybe this time the bus ended up protecting the people granted the only reason why they died might have been just the crashing of the bus but who knows what this would have looked like once again they're trying to make a statement to the world i think like to uh reveal itself on a, on such a large scale that uh, the government can't hide it because these are such small incidents to a certain extent that it, it it usually involves a few people. But you did something like this, a major city, you rip out like a make a good chunk of it disappear like out of nowhere. A lot of people are going to ask some questions, be like, what the hell is going on? So once again, I believe that to be the point. But um, regardless of what I was uh, I, I, circling back to what I was trying to bring up, uh, that guy who drops off the flash drive to uh, uh, Fanola was like, Ferris isn't telling you any everything. She knows more than she's like. No, and she's like, wait, who are you? It's like, why is the guy? Maybe whoever he is, he must be someone that had ties to George at some point in time. So it's like, the, now it's like, who do I trust? Because she even ignores Ferris's call later on in the episode because it's like she can't trust Brian. She definitely can't trust Maddox, and now she's learning she can't trust um, Ferris. And it's like she's kind of going at this alone. Like, who can she trust under these circumstances? But um. Obviously, they, like, divide and conquer to try and find the towers because uh, there's at least, like, three points of location where they're using the debris. And it's like, okay, if we can get to these spots and kind of take these pieces of debris down, like, it'll stop the charge. So, obviously, Finola's group ends up coming upon it, and she's chasing after the dudes. She goes after one in particular. Um, 
the one that's kind of leading a charge, he ended up giving a piece to the other one. And the dude's like, I, interesting enough, it's the actor who played, uh, seen him pop up in many things, but interestingly enough, most re- recently as Jimmy on um, Resident Aliens, uh, obviously like sci-fi under the NBC umbrella. So it's interesting in that regard as well. But it's like, okay, take this. And he's like, you want me to jump? He's like, I've jumped too many times already, but it's like, they believe in this call so much. They're zealots that they um, are willing to die for it. They believe in this cause that much. So it's like whatever risk needs to be taken. So when Maddox and his team leaves, he teleports over there and uses that spot because they cleared it already so they won't end up coming back there. So, But um, Brian ends up turning back around to his place and ends up because it's like, oh, like there was nothing there at Maddox's place initially. So it's like it must be at your spot because Finola found one at hers because they need two points, right? So... The guy was able to kind of stop and stop the charge because the charge build up goes down like they're at 90 percent. But it's like all they need to do is get it back up to 70 to kind of be able to keep it at 70. And that will give them enough enough of the charges left for them to kind of continue things. So that charge would last him about 15 minutes. Luckily, they got he got well, unluckily, but he got back there before it dropped because it was like at 72 percent. So they were able to kind of get it charged up again. Which obviously at that point in time the devices are syncing up. Mallory's shot, and like so they need to jump on this quickly. So Brian drags her back through, and it's like, all right, what do I do? He's like, wait, I thought we did it. Like, he's, she's like, don't worry, it's gonna be very easy. He's like, all right, that's good to know. She's like, actually, I was joking. It's not gonna be easy. It's gonna be very hard. He was like, I was hoping the joke would be the other way around, but okay. He's like, wait, I thought we did it. Like one, two, three. It's like, yeah, if you do that, you're gonna turn into a fine yellow mess. He's like, okay, we're not gonna do that then. So luckily, them working together, they were able to power down the device. Finola, like, you know, takes out her earpiece because she's not trying to let Maddox know where she's at because she's trying to confront this uh, guy on her own. And he talks about the fact is, oh, you have your dad's eyes. And she's asking, like, where is my dad alive? What's happening? But Maddox and his team showed, well, the other team shows up in time, so she doesn't get her answers. But the fact is he's so smug about it and kind of smiling. I mean, like, yeah, it's like, I guess George had told them a lot about Finola maybe because... Uh, Really quickly, obviously there's a conversation later on about Fanola wanting to get answers, and it's like, well, what are they going to do with him? And Ryan's like, oh, they're going to take him to a place where you can't hear him scream, but basically they're going to torture him for information. Obviously the other guy managed to get away. I didn't talk about it, but him jumping again, like, I guess... Because um, even this dude seems like he's got, like, his skin looks messed up on his hands and stuff, so obviously doing all this, like... Techn- whatever they're doing, like, I don't know whether they're shaving off, like, pieces of the, because it was, like, little, like, metal piece that home dude took and then let him teleport. Uh, but obviously, I think it seems like the more and more you do it, the more of a toll it takes on your body. Not just the, oh, you'll mishap and, you know, go into fuse with a cylinder, uh, uh, col- um, uh, concrete pillar like the dude did in episode one, but I think at the very least, it's also like just going to naturally take its toll on your body because you're basically infusing this alien. I believe that basically they're shaving off a specific piece of debris. Like there's a piece of debris that has this teleporting ability. And I think they're shaving off little pieces of it and kind of introducing that into their bodies. And it's basically killing them because the moment he went through the portal, like part of his face looked charred, like it was burned. So we don't know fully what it's doing to their bodies, but I think that's where that technology is coming from. That is smaller pieces of debris that they're like shave, shave, essentially shavings of debris that they're of a very specific piece of debris that lets them teleport, but they can't do it too much because it's either like either they have to wait long periods in time or maybe the the um the build up happens. So, like. I'm wondering, is it a situation of the more you take it, like, back to back to back, like, it builds up, or could you wait, like, maybe three hours or something like that, and the effect that's happened when you wear it down so that you can do more? I think it's probably a consistent build up. So, if you're at 60%, three hours later, you're still going to be at 60%, and every time you use a little bit more, it adds more to that percentage. So, I think it's kind of going up the entire time. There was a weird reference I was about to make in the back of my mind, like, a Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter. Like, your your D drive meter, if I remember correctly, every time Ryu turns into the monster, it's a whole thing. If you've never played a game, that won't mean anything to you, but it's like a thing that, like, oh, once that drive, it, it reaches 100%, it's the end of the game. Whole thing, right? I was wondering if it's basically like that with this, where it's like, like I said, you're constantly at 60%, every little, like, it's always going to stay at that point, and the more you use, the higher it goes up that there's no pulling it back down. Once the effects are settled in you, there's no reversing it. My thought about it, but um, I don't know. 
because for Nola, I think she's also worried that, like, obviously, she, once again, she can't trust the American, so she's assuming, because once again, she doesn't even know she can really trust Brian, because it's like, oh yeah, Maddox tells me everything, so for her, it's probably a thing of, yeah, I can't, I definitely can't trust Brian, because whatever I tell him, he might end up telling Maddox, or maybe it's a thing of, I don't quite know, like, you know, whether Brian's really, like, whether Maddox really tells him everything or not, you know, because she's just like, yeah, sure, just let to know, yeah, go team, you know, so... I don't know if Brian's figured it out yet. He's definitely got that look like he's still trying to figure out like her the way she's acting like. I guess it doesn't cross his mind that she knows about her dad. I, I don't know if he's going to end up figuring that out at all or whether she's going to straight up confront him about it. Because um, like the lump, the more she's in the dark about it, at least like she, the more she feigns ignorance about it, uh, the less they're likely to catch up to what you know. Because if they find out that she knows, they're gonna like bulk like she's. I think she's worried they're gonna buckle down and just kind of keep her even more in the dark. So at least this way, she can at least be still a part of everything while still being in the fold to a certain extent and to get the answer she needs. But I'm also wondering if she's worried that they're gonna end up killing the guy. Just Maddox says, "Don't worry, I'm gonna get what I need." And it's like it sounds like, "Oh, I'm gonna get what I need from him. I'm gonna kill him." And be like, "Oh, sorry, couldn't get any information out of him," even though. Because we don't know if what Maddox is doing is rebuilding the ship like that. We don't know if, like, MI6 is doing the same thing or not. Because I can't even tell if that's something Maddox is doing on his own or whether that's a CIA thing. Like, once again, the lines are blurry on who's on what side. And that actually brings it up, brings it back to the point in this episode, too, where, like, Finola's sister plays a particular song from their childhood because she was, like, she always... It always made her feel good to know, um, to hear that song. It kind of took her back to a better time. Like, there was, like, a video she had sent her sister of them when they were younger, her mom and their dad. So, but when they're playing that song and it's playing, we see in the truck the guy from in, uh, Influx is singing it, too. So that kind of solidifies, because I've talked about it before. Like, I constantly switch back and forth about this whole George thing. Because initially, I was like, oh, George is behind all of this. But then, like, oh, the way things kind of went down, I was like, oh, maybe he's not. Maybe he's held prisoner. I think that's kind of what Fanola's thinking. It's like, they're forcing him to work for them. That's why they're able to advance how uh, their understanding of these debris and kind of, like, how they went from everything that went down in China to, like, uh, them trying to do it again here. And, um, well, they did it before with the... Uh, was it in New Jersey slash Boston wormhole? And now they're trying to do it again in Manhattan because they're getting better and better. And their understanding is because, like, they're forcing George to work. But the fact is that he's singing that song means I think George taught it to him, or maybe he's singing it enough around them that they're picking up on it. But it kind of makes me think. And the fact is that he's kind of got that look like, oh, you're so much like your dad that I think they're counting on Fanola to see things the way her dad does, and that he's going to. And now I'm kind of back to believing that George is the main head of this. He's the head of this operation. He is the head of Influx because he believes in what he's doing, that it's for the greater good because Fanola has a similar philosophy to her dad about like, you know, it's like using this, te if we're not going to use this technology, maybe we don't deserve it because she wants to use it for good and obviously her dad's do using it for bad just so they can ultimately use it for good, I think. And I think Influx, at least that member in particular, kind of is looking at Fanola like, oh, I think you were almost there. That's why he was kind of smiling and stuff like that. You're trying to figure things out. And maybe George even said that, oh, my daughter's going to have this type of reaction. It's like, oh, maybe you're a way ahead of a schedule because George probably didn't want her to know he was alive until the right moment. But now it's like, oh, you actually already know. So because I guess now they know that. Most likely MI6 and the CIA, just Orbital in general, knows about him being alive. So that's what it's, it, 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 in my mind, that's what that gives an answer to. There is also another aspect to um, Maddox since we brought him up, uh, since I brought him up, about his situation this episode. We get more with him, his wife, and their son Dario. Um, still not a lot of context behind everything. It seems like they're in kind of like a couples therapy or just like maybe like some kind of therapy for like people who went through something traumatic. And it seems like, you know, it's like, oh, Maddox, it's, she's like, oh, you didn't really, t you were pretty quiet. He was like, yeah, I kind of get the feeling like she's thinking I'm trying to control the conversation and stuff like that and be in control of everything. So he kind of kept quiet this time, but he's like, you were quiet too. And so his wife wants to move, I think, was it Houston? Which he wants to stay here because, like, this is where our lives are. Like, Dar you want to move for Dario? It's like, no. Like, the fact is that um, he's getting the best help here. 
but it seems like her reasoning is just because she wants a fresh start because I think being there is a reminder and it's just like she's like Maddox wants to stay here because he wants to control fate that whatever happened to their family whatever tragedy it was I'm assuming it's the reason why Dario's in the state that he's in but I think it's He's so busy working to try and control fate for things that you can't control. And it's like, you know, what happened to us? We've kind of got to accept it. He's like, I do accept it. I just accept everything. That's why we're here. And it's just like, he's like, I want my family together. But, it you know, she just kind of pulls away when his phone rings again. So it's like, yeah, it works calling. So just go ahead and, you know, I... It's just interesting. We still know very little about his circumstances. And once again, I'm assuming that's why he's doing kind of the shady stuff that he's doing just for the sake of his child, whether he's looking for a specific piece of um, technology. Because that actually reminds me, because like, you know, he was asking about the cloning thing. So he's probably hoping to like clone Dario. Like maybe he was thinking that maybe uh, they could restore Dario in that regard. Like he's. Or maybe it's like very specific pieces of debris that he wants to sell for a certain price. Because that was also another thought that, you know, Brian was kind of wondering. He's like, maybe they're testing it out so that, oh, it's kind of a demonstration to the buyers. But once again, I think it's supposed to be a demonstration to the world. Who knows? Because uh, it isn't – because they don't want specific people to have this technology. Like I said, I believe they want everyone to have access to this technology. Uh because it can revolutionize the world. It can change so many people's lives. It can change what they know to be true in this world. Um, so, like I said, I think Maddox has like both selfish and non-selfish reasons for doing what he's doing. But, once again, we know very, still very little at this point in time. Everyone's in the dark, including Finola, about all of this. So, um, But there was even that line from... Um, Brian, I thought was interesting where he's like, at the beginning, I didn't think you had it in you for this job. And he's like, I shouldn't have thought that. Like, obviously, you proved time and time again that you are ready to take on this job and kind of everything it comes with, which obviously it comes with a lot more than I think even Finola was kind of expecting. Because it's a situation where she thought like, oh, I just couldn't trust one person. I just couldn't trust Brian. I couldn't trust the Americans. Now I'm realizing, oh, I can't even trust MI6. Because that was something the dude had told him when he gave it a flash drive. Your dad isn't a clone. So saying that this is actually your dad because the circumstances are is like, no, my dad was dead. I'm sure of it. So I'm assuming he faked his death because if he faked his death, because it also seems like because let's not forget, too, Maddox knows that George was a part of something, too. So maybe it's both on the MI6 front. Maybe it's on the CIA front of, like, he, it seemed like whatever, like, side project they've kind of got going on, at least the, uh, the CIA, it seemed like he was a part of that, and he kind of knows what they're up to. That's why they kind of want to get to George first and foremost. And maybe MI6 is in the same vein. I don't know. But it is a thing of like, yeah, he's not a clone. That you know, maybe he did fake his death because he needed to die and disappear, so they stop looking for him, so he can do what he needs to for the betterment of the world to kind of stop both maybe MI6, CIA, maybe every government agency from getting their hands on these um, debris pieces and doing what they will with them. You know, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to ultimately see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, low light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.